This is the Volvo XC40 Recharge, and for a small crossover, it's just cool. It's cool and understated, and in proper Volvo fashion, the interior over delivers on style. The tailored wool seats look and feel like a $10,000 sectional, or a Scottish top coat, if you will. The dash has glowing terrain map inserts, and the ergonomics are perfect. It has a 75 kilowatt hour battery that the EPA says will do 223 miles on a charge, which lands between what you'd get from an Audi e-tron and a Ford Mach-E or Tesla Model Y. But there is one thing we love about the electrification of mainstream vehicles, and that is that no matter how the car looks, no matter the brand, no matter the intended purpose, almost anything today can be a total sleeper. Go. It runs 12s. Zero to 60 in 4.3 in the quarter mile in 12.9 at 108 miles an hour. It's quick. That's right. It has two motors producing a combined 402 horsepower and 486 pound-feet of torque to all four wheels. And that means this little practical entry-level crossover accelerates as quick as a C6 Corvette Grand Sport. Enjoy an avocado toast while leaving closed-minded boomers in the dust. Folks, I wanted to let you know that we have a new level to our Patreon. If you have been a podcast listener for a long time over at the Smoking Tire Podcast, you probably hear me talk about it. It's where we get our questions on the show, and we've added a link meaning not a link, meaning a, a thing that links together the podcast and the video show. We now have a new tier over at the Patreon that will allow you to get all of our car review videos going forward with no ads. And that means no YouTube ads and no host mention integrated ads. I know a lot of you guys don't like ads, but you want to support the show. This is how you do it. Patreon.com slash the smoking tire podcast. The link is all the same for the podcast and the videos. And you just click the link in the video description. Also, that'll have it down there and sign up for our championship tier. You can get all kinds of stuff from access to our live streams. You can ask us questions. You can get the podcasts before everybody else. And you can also get all the podcasts and all the car reviews with no ads in perpetuity. You get a special feed for them. So check that out and enjoy the rest of this video. Look, it may be a cliche that every EV is a dragster now, but that doesn't make it not fun to smash the throttle and ride the wave of torque. I mean, I'm not totally dead inside. It's one thing when you expect it. A six-figure Tesla Plaid, Lucid, or Taycan Turbo S should be stupidly quick. But it's quite the delight when you can really shock someone in a Volvo that's being marketed to vegans. I'm only half kidding here. Volvo has removed all the leather from this car and in the seats replaced it with this delicious wool blend. Now, I love a fancy cloth. There should be much more fancy cloth across the entire automotive spectrum. They also use recycled plastic fibers for the carpets and door liners, which I am totally down with. It even feels pretty nice. It reminds me of leaning up against the PA at a real big fish show in 1994. And even the color, sage, that's like that stuff that hippies burn to make the bad spirits go away. The interior has all kinds of cubbies and creative storage compartments. And without a gasoline engine, you get a frunk. There's a ton of space in back if you fold down the rear seats, and it carries four people comfortably, even if the two in front are over six feet tall. It drives super well too, especially in urban and highway situations, which let's be honest, that's where you're using this car. It's not a Canyon Carver, although it's fine up here. The steering is really, really digital, lacks anything resembling feel, but that's okay because it's very sharp, meaning you actually don't have to do much turning at all to get around 90 degree bends or when parking, the turning radius is excellent. The ride is very good, especially considering it's not air suspension. The regenerative braking is programmed really well, so you don't have to use the pedal that often. 
I already said the power is great. And even when it transitions from the regen to the actual brake pedal, that is a totally seamless move. You really can't feel that anything different is happening other than the car is stopping shorter. There's not much body roll. There's definitely some noise coming through these Pirelli eco-minded tires. But in general, it is a very pleasant driving experience. There are, of course, some problems, and a few of those are more obvious than others, like the range. I'm not talking about the actual range right now. 223 miles isn't the best, but it's acceptable for every day running around, and if you've got somewhere to charge every day, like home or work, it's very usable. No, I'm talking about knowing the range. The gauge only shows a percentage and doesn't actually show the miles to empty. I've looked, there's no way to set that. Instead, what you have to do is say, hey Google, what's my range? You can drive for about 142 miles with the remaining charge. What if I'm mute? What if I have a speech impediment? What if I'm deaf and my speech isn't exactly what Google expects? What if I'm Kanye West with my jaw wired shut during the recording of the college dropout and I couldn't get my range and consequently ended up dead on the side of the road? I would have never done that amazing Alex Jones interview. Well, maybe Volvo is onto something after all. Well, I'm a dummy. I, uh thought there was no range gauge, which there isn't in the main cluster. But if you go into the center screen and you make the range assistant app uh, part of your home screen, then you can get your range by pressing the home button. So ignore what I just said. Although almost all EVs and most modern cars for that matter are in some way connected, it's frankly a little creepy to have to remind yourself so often and so directly that Google is watching you all the time, even while you're driving. Now, we may have sold off our privacy for convenience, and that's just the way of the world now, but riding with Google isn't all bad. The native GPS on the car is Google Maps, which is better than what a lot of other people are offering. Google Assistant works pretty well, and you can use regular speaking voices to have the car do all kinds of things for you. Plus, you've got the podcast app built in, which means you can get the Smoking Tire podcast on the car without needing to connect your phone. Provided, of course, you are in an area with cell service. There's also over-the-air updates, which allow this car to, in theory, improve and refine the UI over time. There is a wireless charging pad, but don't expect wireless CarPlay. It's Google-based system, which means if you have an iPhone, you are a second-class citizen. It works well if you plug in, which is fine for me personally, and hopefully the over-the-air update will add wireless CarPlay eventually. I do kind of feel like the Google versus CarPlay UI wars are on the horizon. Companies are getting tired of integrating both, and they're going to force you into one, the other, or in the case of General Motors, neither. There are other problems too. Our friend Kyle Connor from Out of Spec Motoring does a lot of EV testing, and he found that this car has trouble meeting the EPA range rating, and it slows the charge to a crawl at over 90%. If the car is below 10% charge, it reduces the power heavily, creating a potentially unsafe driving situation on the highway. Seriously, Kyle couldn't get the thing to go over 40 miles an hour in those last few percentage points. 
This isn't the kind of stuff we normally have to report on coming from gas-powered sports cars. They perform the same no matter the fuel level. You don't have to adjust your speed because the fuel light came on and you're trying to get to a gas station and you're certainly not speed limited in that case. Furthermore, there are fast gas stations and slow gas stations, but the flow of fuel into the car is rarely affected by the car itself. That's weird, right? But this is the world we live in right now, and so this is the space in the video we have to dedicate to such discussions. And there's no start button. To start the car, you have to get in it, put your foot on the brake, and put it into gear. Here is another problem that didn't need solving. What was wrong with the button? It is one of many examples where you shouldn't follow Tesla and Lucid down the rabbit hole. There are plenty of times where you might want to turn the car on without physically sitting in it and getting ready to drive. Conversely, there are plenty of times you might want to turn the car off without getting out of it and walking away entirely. It is a problem that didn't need solving. Nevertheless, I do love this car despite its flaws. I like how it looks. I like how it drives. I like it for what it is, and I can forgive it for what it isn't, because what it isn't doesn't inconvenience me that much. It's good in the city. It's good on the highway. It has a great ride and a compact exterior with a very spacious interior. It uses eco-friendly materials that also manage to feel incredibly premium. Every car should be available with wool seats. And the things it doesn't do great, like DC fast charging, handling at the limit, or offering amazing steering feel, I don't really need for a car like this, which for me is an urban and suburban runabout. I think it's important that we don't expect every single thing of every single car. For some people, that may be a requirement, a one-car household, if you will. And okay, if that's the case, maybe the XC40 Recharge is not for you. But if you are a two-car household, if you were to have this for everyday errands and another vehicle for either sporty driving or road tripping, I would give it two thumbs up. It's important for us to remember that not every single car needs to accomplish every single task for every single person. The bottom line is that if you can charge the XC40 at home or work, don't need to be maxed out on range heavy road tripping, and want a luxurious place to hang in a small package, the XC40 is a big winner. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off The Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com TST.